Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on the Cyclopean Craft server with me, Eleni. No surprises there. And today we're going to be doing a couple of things. We're going to be moving the cows and sheep to our little underground farm area and going to get started on the redesigning of the villager area because that needs to get done. So we have our hole for our cow farm dug out. So it's going to be a semi-automatic cow farm. I think the design is by what? The design is by Wattles. I'll leave the link for the video in the description. I'm just going to get on building a little bit more, and then I'll be back with you to show you a bit of progress. So this is the design. So this is where the cows will be going. And then when they breathe, the babies will fall down, we wait for them to grow up, and then we kill them. Now I'm just going to do the fun part of getting the cows in here, which is going to be fun. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Hopefully it'll be better than trying to get the sheep into their one wide pens. I've got my wheat. Time to let my cows out. <laughs> Right, come on, yous have got a new home to go to. Come on. You too, mister. Oh, the one that gets stuck in that corner. So that is all the cows now in place, and it has been working fantastically, except for when I accidentally left the hole so all the baby cows could escape. And that was fun. That was so much fun. But anyway, now just to wait for them to grow up and they'll be ready to harvest. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Cyclopean Craft. With me, Eleni. And me, Gwent Gamer. Now, you might be wondering why Gwent is here with me in front of my base. And that's because we have a very big plan. We are going to be building a witch farm today. I am so excited. So I think Eleni has found a witch head already. Am I right, Eleni? Yes, it took a while and a few mishaps, but I did find one. <laughs> Amazing. So we're going to head on over there now. Okay, see you in a bit. We made it all the way out here to the witch hut, just over there, as you can see. And Eleni's actually already prepped this for us. Yes, so I've already done a little bit of prep. We'll go over and have a quick look. So the way the witches spawn is they won't spawn on any area. You have to find the specific spawning platform, which we have done here. It's quite simple. If I can just get over. Can you quickly dig a hole in the roof? So I can drop down. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did was I just put loads of glass panes all over this bit and then you go 25 blocks away and then you mark off the area in which they spawn. So they spawn in between these four glass panes and that is the only spot they will spawn in. So keep that in mind. And next up, we are going to be working on the actual farm bit, so the water pulse and the trident farm. Ooh, okay, yeah, so let's get started on the water pulse first then, uh, because the trident farm is going to involve a bit of digging, isn't it? Yes, we will have to dig down. Okay, so I'll set up a beacon. You get working on the water pulse, and um, we'll meet back in the middle. Right, let's go. <laughs> let's go. As you can see in Exhibit A, we have ourselves a witch farm. Yes, so that's right. The witch farm is completed, fully functional. It is a beautiful thing. However, we couldn't quite go with our original design, so we changed it up a bit. However, first we're going to demonstrate it, and then we'll pop down below and go over what changes we made and how it works with you. Okay, so it's a, a really simple trident killer up top, and there we have it. And um, 
they die. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Oh, how lovely. And we do have... We don't have a proper storage system in place. This is just temporary. We will be adding more because potions will get filled up so quickly. Well, so yeah, we need to... I think that's probably priority numero uno. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, let's go on down and look at the actual farm so you guys can see about the design de decisions that we made. Let's go. We're down here at the base of the witch farm and we did have a, a little issue with the layout of the witch farm, which I think Eleni will be better to explain. Yeah, so originally our plan was on the 2x2 two two spawning platform was to have one of the those blocks missing and they would drop down there however the problem we encountered was when the block was missing they would no longer spawn so instead of having the hole there we just moved it over one so it was next to the spawning platform rather than being part of it we used yes, a water flushing system to push them over into a little hole which brings them along and Gwent actually worked on the next part so I'll let him continue yeah, I just wanted to elaborate a little bit more on your bit. Um, okay. First, though, because just just so you guys can visualize, so the witches can spawn in a two by two area, which Eleni explained earlier. Uh, so these redstone blocks would be where the witches can spawn, and we had water coming from over this way to flush them down a hole that we had created right here. But obviously that takes away a spawning block and it really decreased the spawns, well, by a quarter, apparently. <laughs> uh, so Eleni quite rightfully switched it over, popped that back in, and now we have water flushing them uh, this way. And yeah, we're just getting a lot more witches spawned now. So good job, Eleni. Yeah, the spawn is um, really good. Yeah, really good. And then rather than dropping the witches down into the ground which was our, our original plan we realized that we'd have to dig out quite a large perimeter to make sure that this farm was optimized uh, but instead we've decided to send them right up into the sky and our afk spot is up there and that just means that all we need to do is light up a couple of caves and light up the surface and this farm is pretty much max efficiency out the out the bat so yeah it's uh, it's actually spawning really well now um we just need to do some afk in the test so how good it's going to be and we need to sort out the chests but i think we did good for our, our first proper farm project together yes and i don't know about you but it's my first time ever building a witch farm as well so i think we did very well we did really well it is my first time building a witch farm too um i would just say in in uh, 1.16 witch farms have become much easier to build Yes, I know there was a lot of issues with them spawning beforehand. Yeah. Hello, guys. Now, you might be wondering, why diamonds? Why diamond armor? Why diamond tools? And well, that is because I've lost everything. Oh, my netherite. Bye-bye. I thought it would be a great idea to respawn the dragon for a dragon's breath. Didn't record it, thought it would be smooth sailing, just go through with loads of bottles, get loads of dragon's breath, but no, it went bad, very bad. And now I am trying to recover, however it's not going too badly. Managed to get decent picks back, so that is something. And I have Toolsmith Villagers, so they are helping out very nicely. But yeah, so that means another trip to the nether to get more netherite. Gwent restocked his booming beds, so we are going to go do that shortly. So I am back from my little nether adventure. 
got some netherite. There's four pieces right there, and I've already turned my pick into a netherite pick. So on our way to recovering all that we lost, we'll probably have to do some more mining uh, in the nether at some point, but for now that will suffice. If necessary, I do have some ingots in a shop that I can plunder from a little bit. So that should all be okay, but I wanted to talk to you about the villagers. So as you can see, I've put a little wall around the edge because the babies could fall down the gaps where the walls are so the walls go straight through there's not a solid floor and i didn't want any more getting in between the floors or down in the farm so i've blocked up for now until i'm done breeding them what the adults are fine they don't fall down so as soon as i'm done breeding them it'll all be a-okay However, this setup, even with the beds and stuff, is still only temporary. I'm not quite sure, one, what I'm going to do round here. Um, but I'm also not sure how I'm going to set up the area in general. Because they'll be going in like the little boxes again eventually. However, I want to set it up so they can kind of look at each other. So I can do the whole thing of curing zombie villagers and getting them all to give me everything for one diamond because a lot of them are very expensive at the moment and that is no fun right so we are about to go down into the farm i'm not quite sure how i'm going to close up this little area here i'm half tempted to leave it open because i need access to where i keep the cows but i don't think i want to completely open so i think i might just put a little doorway in there and i have set up the piston pusher for the grass for the sheep the sheep are actually currently hidden over here as you can see yeah i just need to Faff about a bit with getting them in the one wide pens again, which is uh, not going to be very fun at So we're going to be doing a little project next. I'm just going to get some bits together for it and then we can get started. Um, it's not a new project, we're actually going to fix up something that I already built because I can make it so much better, which will be really good. So let me know in the comments what you think that we're going to do next before we actually do it. And then you can find out if you're right or not. So let's go down into our underground farm area. Our next little project is going to be the bamboo and sugarcane farm. So we need to get to work on it. You might have noticed as well, I've turned most of down here into nice sandstone, except from this little bit because of the redstone. But anyway, yeah, so instead of being the three rows, it's going to be two, and they're going to be facing into each other, and it's also going to be bone meal powered now that I've got my hands on a skelly farm. So free, unlimited bones and bones meal. Fantastic. So it's going to be quite a basic design. I will show you bits throughout the process. But anyway, I'm just going to get work on clearing it out, and then I will be back with you. So I have cleared everything out, as you can see. I've done some basic measurements of this general area it's going to fit into. So the idea is that everything from that will end up in either these set of chests or that set of chests in this general area. Will be the same with the cow farm and the sheep farm as well. They'll all end up in there as well, even though at the moment the cow farm does have its own chest. And I didn't show you this earlier, but from the little harvest I done earlier, that's what I got. So that's pretty good, even though I do usually buy my own food. But anyway, let's get to this. I'm gonna do a little time lapse for you. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy.
almost finished. You'll have seen a good bit of it in the time lapse. However, I stopped the time lapse a bit sooner than planned because redstone just wasn't working for me today. Um, so I stopped the time lapse so I could get the redstone sorted out because for some reason I forgot how to do a couple of things and it was just causing me loads of problems. However, that is this side set up, so well almost set up. It's not a hundred percent finished yet, but essentially what it is is this a lever Oop, here as you just saw which powers this which would fire all the dispensers filled with bone meal and at the same time that will activate this rail. Just give you a little demonstration. Be prepared for lots of clicking. Ooh, that's full. I think I can fix that. Right, that's it fixed. Uh, see what I mean? It's so simple and so obvious and I should more than know better. Yeah, now I just need to do the same thing for the other side, which should go a lot smoother since I've worked out all the kinks and if I do forget, I can just check what's going on on this side. The only other thing I still need to do is the hoppers and the little rail system that will put all the bone meal in. However, that shouldn't take too long and I'll be back with you when it's done. Right, it's time to give it a quick test. So I'm gonna put a stack of bone meal in this one and a stack of bone meal in this one. And then we should see everything come into this water stream. I still need to replace it with ice, but Yep, the system functions. So we'll have to get a bit more glass so we don't get any edges here. But it is working. It's working.